Hi, Peter Balker here and welcome to today's edition of The Transition Guy. Now joining me today is Eldon Mills. No, thank you for coming in. You're welcome, Peter. Author of Unstoppable Teams and a former Navy SEAL. Now I've got to say to you that today your presentation just totally blew my mind. Because actually, to be in the military, I know you have to have a certain kind of mindset, but actually you've got a certain kind of mindset and a certain care of care set that I really didn't expect. So thank you for sharing that. How much, tell, tell us about the fact that, what does it really take from a mindset point of view to really be a SEAL? Because actually that's, that's some of the most horrendous training Buds is probably in the most horrific experience, especially when you go through Hell Week, that person can endure. So what Peter's talking about and the presentation he heard was a series of training stories, in particular one in Hell Week. Hell Week is where they keep you up from Sunday to Friday, give you a total of like three, three and a half hours of sleep. The point of telling the SEAL story, the training SEAL story, is not to say, oh, look at me, how tough I was, because I really wasn't that tough. I just focused on one step at a time. And I'll talk about the technique on how to do that. But the real point of telling one of the couple of stories that I do tell that are SEAL related is so you don't have to go through SEAL training to understand and use the value that they're trying to teach you. And in this case, what he's talking about is how, how did these 18 guys at the time, there's now females allowed to go through, decide not to quit. When 100 and, what did we have, 104 quit. Not just in Hell Week, but before that. And I can't speak for everybody else, but being someone that's not really a great runner, ironically, even though I invented the perfect push-up, I was terrible at push-ups. I was a good rower, though. I knew how to pull. So I had that in my back pocket. I had one thing that I could rely on that would give me some strength. But at the end of the day, what got me through all of it is that I, unbeknownst to me, had started to do what I call an outcome account. And I talk about it a lot in my book, Unstoppable Teams. And an outcome account is really nothing more than making you aware, right before you make a decision, what's going to happen. So in this particular case, and what I talk about with an outcome account is you make a large T, at the very top of the T, you define your goal. Be as specific as you can on the goal. Let's say it was make it through SEAL training, graduate with class 182. And on one side underneath the T, write a plus. On the other side, write a minus. And now under the plus column, I want you to write down three things. Number one, what is the positive outcome should you accomplish this goal? Number two, who will be impacted when you accomplish, number one, the positive outcome of the goal? And number three, how will that affect you? How will that make you feel? And then I want you to go on the negative side. After you've gone through those three, and do the exact same thing. What's the outcome if you do not achieve your goal? Two, who is impacted when you do not achieve your goal? Three, how does it make you feel on the people that you impacted and how you did not achieve your goal? So, let me put it in real world for you. I'm in SEAL training, it's Wednesday night. I didn't tell this story, by the way, and I am thinking about quitting. Now, why am I thinking about quitting? Because I had a series of instructors coming up to me. I was the only officer in my class. And we now down to 18. One officer, me, 17 enlisted. And the officers would come up to me and they'd say, sir, seriously, look around. How do you honestly think you can lead in SEAL team when you can't even lead through Hell Week? Come on, let's call this. This is ridiculous. So you're kind of an embarrassment, actually, if you think about it. You call yourself a leader? All these people, they just quit on your watch. We might even have to condense your class down, roll it into the next one. Sir, you're a disgrace. Come on, let's go. Let's call it. We'll make it easy for you. 
And I'll tell you, at that point, I'd been up for 72 hours. They had a point. My class had already had by the time we were three days into it. And I was starting to wonder, like, wow, maybe I am really a bad leader. However, I had a little colonel that I knew, I'm not really a bad leader because I'd been the captain of my sports team, which in this case was rowing back in college. I know, I get, what, wait a minute. And then you start to play out, wait, if I quit, what is that gonna feel like when I go up and ring that bell? What is it gonna feel like when I have to go back to my school and tell them I quit? What is it gonna feel like when I have to go back to my town and talk to those people who said, I knew you'd never make it. I knew you'd be a quitter. And then when I really got close, then I played out. What is it going to feel like when I'm a father and I turn to my children and I say, don't do what your father did. Don't quit. Trust me, you got to stick it out. That one hurt the most. I knew I wanted to be a dad. And I call that creating an outcome movie. Now, you'll notice everything I did was just focus on the negative. And I think you'll find in some of your harshest environments, and by the way, I played the same thing out when I was thinking of, people were telling me I should go bankrupt the first time when we were starting the company. Three years later, five years later, we're an Inc. 500 fastest growing company, um, fastest growing consumer products company in the country. Uh, we almost went bankrupt again. And people told me you should go bankrupt. And I played the outcome movie out. And I took it so far as to going into my kid's room in the middle of the night and saying, uh, Daddy went bankrupt today. And then I waited to see how those kids would feel. Now, of course, they were asleep, and I played it out. I'm like, oh, Daddy, what does that mean? I'm like, well, it means we're going to have to move. We're going to leave this town, leave your school, and go somewhere else. Well, I don't want to do that. And then you start being and feeling the actual actions if you take that negative one. And what you'll find, my guess, is that the negative consequence will be more powerful to you than the positive. Play that out when you're looking at anything hard. I will tell you right now, what you decide to focus on is what you'll decide to feel. Your only limits are the limits that you decide you have. And that's really interesting because not only did you do your Hell Week during BUDS, but you had the equivalent in business twice over. The right. Twice when you were going bankrupt. Well, let me tell you, I, I will tell you right now, SEAL training was just a warm up for business. Mm. You know, you're, we talked a lot about care, we talked a lot about, and I didn't even go that far as to talk about care squared. Eventually what you're gonna find is care turns into love. People will love being a part of that. They're looking for this. They want to be a part of a tribe. I talked about hell week. I went through hell years mm. in business. And so many people watching this, so many people still tuning in today, they have experienced hell weeks. And it's, they, they need to find the capacity to get through it. Mm -hmm. Because so many businesses I see out there, they get under this, so much pressure that they fold. And they often fold just before they hit that gold. And why do they do that? I'll tell you why, my opinion. Mm -hmm. Because they're in this moment and somebody comes in like, oh my gosh, you don't have the money to do this, 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 and this, and they paint this mountain of a disaster, right? Yep. And then all of a sudden, you focus on this mountain of a disaster, and you're like, ah, oh, overload, ah, quick button, right? No, focus on the moment, just the moment, not the mountain. In anything you do, talk to your kids. When your kids are going through sport, I deal with this all the time with my kids, kids. Let's just focus on the moment, not the mountain. And that is so equivalent in anything we do. Like, hey, look, in SEAL Team, I got to the point where I was like, can I take one more step? Yeah, I can take one more step. Can I take one more step? Yeah, I'll take one more step. It's the same in business, okay? Focus on that moment. Trust me on this. We all go through our rainy days. They're there for a reason. They're there to weed out the weak. And the weak isn't what I'm talking about physically. I'm talking about it mentally and emotionally. Yeah, absolutely. And the second thing, because I really thought, okay, do you know what, Navy SEAL, this one's going to be badass. He's going to be out there, tough as, tough as boots. 
really sort of emotionally, <clears throat> just not connecting with people. But you're totally the opposite. You're actually full of love, care and compassion, which you wouldn't necessarily expect, because the stuff that you had to do as a soldier, it's, I mean, you're pushing limits that most people will never push. Yet I tend to find that with so many entrepreneurs, because they feel that they have to be this tough person, they never connect with people. And they never have that care and that love that probably would give them the success. How would you help people overcome that? You because, know the first thing? Yeah. It's a human touch. It is. And you want to know? I'm a hugger. And by the way, most, most tough guys, I've worked with your SAS over in Bosnia, huggers. We're all huggers, okay? It may be like the macho thing, hug. I know I'd ask for permission in my company, but every day I always went in and I greeted everybody with a hug. I gave them a hug, I let them know I care about you. And I wanna know about how your children are doing. What's going on at home? I don't want to hear anything about the beginning of the day. I want to hear about what happened last night when you left work. We don't separate. We might think we do, but we don't. We're the same person, hopefully, when you walk in the front door that you leave. Absolutely. I want you to be you that. I don't want you to be two different people. I want to know exactly who you are, and I want to know, like, yes, I want to celebrate little Annie making the ballerina team, or I want to celebrate Jack's home run, or, you know, Susie Q's football goal. But... That, so many people forget, like, no, 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 I am the visionary entrepreneur, I can only be this. No, if anything, you want to know how you be visionary? Love your people, and they will not let you down. It goes back to that Roosevelt quote, doesn't it? It does. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. I wrote my whole book on that. That's the whole basis of it. And that is just such a powerful quote. It is. So true. It is so simple, but... It's hard. It is hard. It's hard to show how you care. And so we break down care in the book and talk about the four stages that transition from this disconnected group of individuals all the way to an unstoppable team. And I would definitely say that if a Navy SEAL can actually demonstrate the pathway to care, anybody can. Because, no, it's so brother. true. It I is so, so true. But if people want to know more about what you do, where do they need to go? They can go to my website, which is my first name, Alden, A-L-D-E-N, hyphen, Mills, M-I-L-L-S, dot com. And they can get, I mean, you've got two books out. I do. So yeah, the pitch. first one is Be Unstoppable, and the new one that Forbes just called uh, number one leadership book for 2019 is Congratulations. Unstoppable. Thank you. Unstoppable Teams. And it is about that human connection. So if you're struggling with leadership or you want to take your leadership to the next level, all I can recommend is go read the books, most definitely. Pop over to the website, connect. By the way, I'm feeling it with you. You care about what you're doing here, Peter. Hey, listen, it's all about people. Peter went and grabbed me earlier and he goes, hey, you're lucky to have this guy. You do a lot of great work. Thank you for doing this. Well, do you know what? It's getting your message out to people. Because... I've seen entrepreneurs, it can be such a lonely place. When you were going through your bankruptcy, I mean, you know what, it's desperation. I see people day in, day out, yeah. put their entire life, they literally put their entire life on the block, they're mortgaged out to the hilt, there's nothing more that breaks my heart than seeing people try, put everything on, and risk everything and lose it all. And it doesn't have or, to happen. And even worse, they give up right before the sun rises. Absolutely. And this is what I say. It's darkest before dawn. And it is. And it is, I mean, what you've been talking about today and all the other people that have been talking, we've had some really good keynotes today and it's all about connection. And I think that's the biggest thing that we've lost over the last 20 years, 20, 30 years. Technology has been a massive enabler. Yeah. But it's also stopped us from yeah. still connecting. You know, David Merriman Scott brought it up today. Uh, I believe he's correct. The pendulum's swinging back, and yeah. we're starting to put our phones down more and be like, hey, you know what? I don't really feel good inside. This is not bringing me joy tapping away at this. It's like a sugar hit. Mm. And I 
I felt really good when I went to a concert and hung out with other people and, you know, did weird things like the waltz, did a dance again, and, you know, and, and started to reconnect. Well, technology is your equivalent of digital diabetes, really. When you yeah, it. <laughs> it is. I like that. Yeah. Did you come up with that? Yeah, just now. I like that. Digital yeah. diabetes. So, <laughs> Peter. If anything we've said today resonates with you, you want to sort of look at it more, look at your leadership, head over to Borka.com and get in touch. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure and an honor to meet Welcome. you. Welcome. Keep inspiring entrepreneurs. Thank you for what you do. I will do what I can. And remember, failing to learn is learning to fail.